All right, welcome to the custom Snap-on Toolbox build. So it's been about four years of procrastination to take these old school lockers that I picked up off the side of the road in New Zealand and actually do something with them. I decided it'd be pretty cool to incorporate these as side cabinets on the side of my Snap-on tool chest. Now the tool chest itself has got an interesting story. I picked it up from Ford BMW Motorsport Asia team. It's been all around Asia and the Middle East at different racetracks running race cars with plenty famous drivers um, over the years. We picked them up some years ago and they've had a bit of a restoration. I did scrub them down and give them a, a fresh powder coat, but they needed something a bit more. So the first job was to split the lockers into two, but that left a gaping hole on both sides of them. So I had to fill that hole in with 18 gauge steel, clamp it into place, drill it out and many hot rivets later we had a much stronger and more rigid side cabinet ready to be mounted to the snap-on toolbox. From there on I broke out the trusty Stabler center punch and we were going to make four back plates for the brackets that will support the, the lockers from underneath. I decided I wanted to go with an industrial look for these brackets. So using a bit of scrap steel I had floating around, we broke out the one mil cutting disc and cut through the brackets like the proverbial knife through butter. For the brackets themselves, I decided I wanted an industrial look and bugger me sideways if I didn't already have a template for previous projects I did, which is mounting the triple screens on my sim rig. Whizzed out that template and it fitted perfectly. So those brackets got remade again and were put into use for, for this project. Out the one mil cutting disc, we quickly whizzed through them and cut them down to shape. and then tack them all together to form the skeleton of the industrial brackets. From there on, we had to break out the one mil cutting disc again and cut out four strips of 18 gauge steel, just the right length to wrap around the outside and give these brackets the industrial look. How we do that is quite simple. Place the brackets on top of the strip in the central position and tack weld them each side into place. Now we use the heat from the tack welds to heat both pieces of metal up so it's a lot easier to bend at the uh, thinner end. So you can see here I'm tacking at the end and as soon as I've got that done I'll start to pull the, uh, the bracket around bending the end around. We do it in stages and once it gets too hard to bend then we simply add another tack to create some more heat and we carry on the bending process. It's a really cool job. I really enjoy doing these industrial brackets. So what we're aiming for is to keep both pieces of metal close together all the way around the bend. And once we've got that completed, we give them a nice bit of welding and uh, there we go completed industrial look bracket. After a little while, we have four completed industrial brackets all welded up and ready to go. So now it's time to have a cup of tea, break out the rich tea biscuits, and then have a sit down and fit them all to the toolbox. So I used some rib nuts for the bottom mountings. As you can see, the toolbox is a bit funky. It's had some additions welded to the bottom over the years. I think it's had something rather heavy dropped on it at some point. And I wanted to incorporate one of the threaded holes for the mounts to mount the locker to, but I also needed to create another hole and I used a rib nut to, uh, to mount those lockers onto. From there on, it's a case of explaining to my 43 year old spine why it is getting punished lifting lockers on and off of the toolbox. And then we all got a bit out of hand. So I decided the lockers looked great, but they needed a shelf. So I went down the road and had a shelf folded up on a uh, industrial folding machine. And then I rattled the ends over to get a perfectly fitting shelf in place held in place with rib nuts and bolts 
and then we broke out some cans of two-year-old spray paint this was actually bed liner paint that i used for a previous project been sat in 50 degrees so the paint finish is well as you would expect note to self use fresh cans of paint in the future so there then i went over to my compound and i found a piece of old chipboard cut that down to size and that became the backing for my toolbox i thought that looked pretty cool but we could make it even better and this is the point where things just fell into place all the fabrication styles aligned i decided i wanted to fit a powerpoint broke out some of my um, adapter plugs and to my surprise this one just happened to fit exactly perfectly in the gap it was almost like i'd measured it on purpose and made it happen but i'll be honest i didn't it was just luck then i broke out some four floor sealer and sealed the chipboard to stop all the bits falling off and while i was over having the shelf bent up the new fabrication company i used showed me a laser cnc machine they just bought so it seemed rude not to incorporate that and have a smoking steel garage sign cut out which they did within a matter of hours then things started getting crazy so i decided the sign needed to be stepped away from the chipboard backing by about an inch to half an inch but I couldn't figure out how I wanted to do it. And I also decided I wanted to use these rather fancy brass bolts. But how was I going to attach those to make a spacer? Broke out some aluminium tube, cut that down to size, and then we figured out we could squeeze the bolts with the vise into the aluminium tube and it would make an interference fit, which was just strong enough to hold the sign on. Amazing. Now for the other side, we simply did the same, but with still M8 nuts. It was like the fabrication gods were smiling over me. Such a simple fix. About two hours of procrastination how to do it, and then we figured it out. So breaking out the spiral level, we made sure the sign was straight. Marked out the holes. And then at that point decided that was all far too far up, so just pulled out the drill, held the thing in place and drilled the holes. So to mount the sign we popped in those awesome looking brass screws. And then the fabrication of pixies, the voices in my head took over and told me it'd be a really good idea to incorporate some LED lighting. So, back in the truck, off down the road to the lighting shop, and I came back with six meters of LED, and then things started to get a little crazy. So after many hours of pushing every button I had on my new remote control LEDs, we decided to step away from something that resembled an Amsterdam brothel, and go for the mild green glow to, uh, to show off the accents of the toolbox. I don't think this is going to increase my productivity in any way, but it will give me something to do when I'm bored. So there we go, there is the finished toolbox. It is by no means perfect, but it is looking a lot better than when we started. I can only say I'm more than happy with the outcome, although the hours I've put in, I don't think I'll be doing it again too soon. We finished the toolbox off with a new cover, a new plastic cover sourced from a local hardware shop. And then I got a little crazier still and mounted in the power charger for my uh, hardware. So there we go, the toolbox is done. Now it's time to crack on and get some other projects done like the various racing cars I have laying about that don't run and also my kids motorbikes which are being rapidly outgrown and I still haven't got around to fixing them so if you want to see more stay tuned please feel free to subscribe and I hope you've enjoyed this video thanks for watching